Welcome back. Today we're going to compare all the portrait lenses that Fujifilm currently have in its uh, production li lineup. I had the previous 56mm 1.2, the original one, and I loved it. Then I sold it when I sold all of the previews um, production of prime lenses because I knew that the new breed of lenses was going to be re released and I didn't want to have those lenses to lose value. Plus, I was using them a little bit less uh, lay, um, at, at that moment. So it made more sense to do it. Now I own the 56, uh, new, the new, the new 56, as you can see over here with my X-H2. And thanks to the guys at RCE Photo, the biggest use market in Italy when it comes to photography, which is also expanding in, in Europe, I had the chance to test the 50mm f1.0. And if you haven't seen my review, go have a look at it here because I just released it last week. And also, if you haven't checked my previous review of the, 56, of the new 56, go have a look at it there right now because it's going to give you more details, more in-depth of that specific lens. But for the purpose of this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on what I got from using these lenses in a professional environment, shooting exactly what these lenses were built for, meaning portraits. And um, let me tell you one thing, testing three lenses in the same shooting session, to me at least, to my, um, to the way, for the way that I shoot, is impossible. So I tested them uh, in couples, the 56 old against the 56 new, and then the 56 new against the 50, because otherwise it would be a headache just to manage the lenses, the, the metadata, and, and all of that. So, with that out of the way, let's get started with the review. But before we do that, uh, let me show you a little montage with a few uh, pictures that I got from each one of these lenses. They are all uh, built really good. They're all metal. They all have the typical plastic hood from Fujifilm. Nothing to write home about. It feels a little bit cheap compared to the uh, rest of the build quality of the lens. But that's what we got. I'm not going to complain. I don't use the, the hood anyways. So it's not going to it's not gonna bother me at all. Um, where they all have the aperture ring. See here. With the new 56 having also the um, lock you see over here uh, that allows you to put it in auto and then uh, lock it there so to prevent accidental uh, moving of the, of the aperture ring. One more detail, the new 56 as well as the 50 millimeter is weather sealed while the first version is not. And this is... This may or may not be important for you, but it's it's uh, it's one of the main differences when it comes to the to the to the build quality. The old 56 and the new 56 they differ a little bit in size, uh, but not too much. The front element is bigger 
and the overall uh, barrel of the new 56 is a little bit fatter uh, and the front element is 67 millimeters while the old one was 62 but the biggest difference in this comparison is with the 50 millimeters because the 50 as you know is huge humongous it's way oversized compared to the other two and uh, this is going to make a lot of a difference for some because not only is bigger but it also weighs almost double because the new 56 weighs 445 grams the uh, if the 50 millimeters f1 weighs 845 grams it's almost double the weight When it comes to the autofocus, I didn't run specific tests. As I said, I'm, I'm trying to make this more a video on my experience rather than uh, cold tests. But there's something that is immediately not noticeable as, as soon as you uh, try all of these three. The new 56 is snappier, way snappier than the other two lenses. Although it doesn't have uh, the linear, linear, linear model, which is quite a bummer. And not only is snappier, it's also a little bit more precise when focusing especially using the um, eye detection which you tend to use quite a bit when you're shooting portraits so uh, the new 56 sets himself apart from the competition in this specific comparison uh, because it's snappier it's uh, more accurate and it's also more silent it's not, it's not super silent again it's not the linear models but the, the noise is kept is well kept under control the 56 old and the 50 to me are quite comparable maybe a little bit better with the 50 which is surprising if you consider that it has to move quite a lot of glass and it's huge so the motors have to push a lot more stuff to get the lens to focus so uh it, none of them is great this is something that uh, you need you need to know you're not going to be shooting you're not going to be shooting uh, tracking subjects like sports or dogs running at you or people running at you with a high keep, uh, percentage of keepers because none of them is great but again with the new 56 you get quite an advantage over here mind you that with the new bodies both the 50 and the 56 get quite a boost and their performance uh, compared to the bodies that were available when they got launched gets quite a bit of a of upper performance boost as i said it's not comparable to the new 56 but they do decently decently well as i said no wars or bricks today but i shoot them and i compare them just to get you a better idea of what you're gonna get um but I'm not going to show all of the pictures because it's, it, it was, it's going to be super boring if I, if I do that. As usual lately, all of these tests and all of the shots that you saw were uh, shot on the X-H2, meaning on the 40 megapixel sensor. Let's start with general observations. The, in general, the new 56 has quite a lot more contrast than the old while the 50 sits in between the being a little bit closer to the old 56 millimeter when it comes to contrast. Now, whether this is good or bad, uh, it's, uh, it's something you have to decide for yourself. Uh, I, I would understand someone that says that too much contrast in a portrait lens is not a good thing. And I, again, I would understand that, but you can open the shadows uh, quite a bit with the new bodies so it's not it's not a big deal on the other hand if you're not using the lens for portraits and using it for something else the additional contrast is more pleasing to the eye again it depends on your taste uh, and I wouldn't pick one over the other because of the contrast because if you're doing uh, post-production anyways you can make them look similar chromatic aberration are very well controlled on the new 56 while the old 56 uh, uh, sits quite a bit below it and the, the 50 millimeters the f1 the f.1 is pretty terrible especially when wide open if you've seen my review last week you will definitely know that when it comes to chromatic aberration the 50 f1.0 is 
doesn't handle those very very well and it's a bummer because it kind of uh, defeats the purpose of using it at f1 but let's let's move forward from a color perspective uh, despite being all Fuji lenses despite being um, top of the line lenses anyways there's quite a little bit of difference uh, when it comes to the color re rendering the 50 millimeters is a little bit warmer the new 56 is the coldest of the trio while the 56 old again sits in the middle when it comes to color you would notice that only if you use them side by side if you were using just one of three you would get used to the, to its look and it wouldn't matter too much so don't don't or don't stress too much on the warmth or um, coolness of the colors because again if you don't compare them side by side you won't see the difference when it comes to the bokeh the bokeh we all know it's subjective but they are they are capable of producing a very pleasing bokeh but there's a difference in my opinion between uh, the three lenses the new 56 and the 50 are quite similar when it comes to the quality of the of the of the bokeh if I'm not wrong, the 50 has 9 blades, the new 56 has 11, but in the field, at the end of the day, you don't see that much of a difference. The difference is with more visible with the old 56, because the old 56 has less aperture blades, and uh, it's uh, a, little bit, a little bit less pleasing than the other two. Don't get me wrong, it's a great bokeh anyways, and I'm not uh, saying that what everybody has said before that the, the the bokeh of the 56 was was a pleasing bokeh now it's wrong it's not like that it's just that if you compare lenses and one is better than the other at least to my eye i have the uh, i have to tell you so to me the 56 come in the 50 get close probably a little bit prefer the 56 but it's like a slight difference and the old 56 sits a little bit behind it on another note, I haven't tested them uh, with a heavily backlit scenario, so I cannot tell you when it, who, who does best on flaring and all of that when backlit. So on this one, apologies, but I couldn't, I didn't have the chance to test this specific, this specific case. But let's talk about sharpness because that's where the majority of the difference uh, are visible when you compare them side, side by side. Uh, and when it comes to sharpness, from wide open to approximately f2.8, there's no comparison. The new 56 destroys uh, all the, the, the other two lenses by a decent amount of, 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 of sharpness. It can definitely resolve the 40 megapixels straight from f1.2, and it outperforms the, the other two in a pretty visible way up until f2.8 center sharpness is great already from wide open and the board and the corners are already usable wide wide open and as you stop down they tend to become basically perfect the 50 when it comes to sharpness beats the old 56 uh, both in the center in the corners in the same aperture range between like say wide open and f2.8 when you get to f4 that's where differences tend to become less visible, although they're, they're still there. All the lenses are very sharp, center to corner, when you, sh when you stop down at f4. However, the new 56 outperforms the 50 by a, not a huge margin, by a visible margin, and the 50 outperforms the old 56, again, by a narrow but still uh, visible margin. So when it comes to sharpness, Actually, I would say when it comes to image quality in general, the 56 seems to out the new 56 seems to outperform the uh, the other two. A huge advantage that is uh, related to the new 56 is the minimum focusing distance. Now, you may tell me that you, with the 56, which is an 85 equivalent, uh, you probably willing to sh to shoot uh, from the hip up. So you're not going super close and this minimum focusing distance doesn't make too much of a difference. And I would probably agree for most of the time, but the time that you have to use it, 
having the 50, mill 50 centimeters minimum focusing distance that you have on the new 56 compared to the 70 that you have on both the old 56 and the 50 makes a whole lot of a difference, especially because when you're shooting at 50 centimeters, the 56 new is already sharp in the center and usable in the corners. The other two tend to give up quite some sharpness for both the fact they are less sharp to begin with and the fact that they lose some uh, performance when used at their minimum fo focusing distance. This means that when you have the 56 new, you should close up with a lot more confidence. And we're going to talk about confidence in my final um, ver verdict. Uh, but with a lot more confidence than you do with the other two with the other two lenses. When it comes to video, I haven't tested it, them all of them for video uh, specifically because I think none of them was uh, born for it. Although you can use them, one thing that I can tell you is that with the new fifty six, I had to use it at a wedding uh, almost a month ago. And the performance was pretty damn amazing. Uh, even the autofocus, in a wedding situation, you don't have like super fast things happening. Usually, it may happen sometimes, but normally stuff happen in a pretty acceptable pace. And the 56 new could keep up with uh, shooting the, the bride and the groom and the best man and best, best women. Um, not best women. What is what does it say? Uh, the 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 maid of honor, I guess, uh, without any problem. Even moving kids, uh, if they're not not running, it, it it could keep up. I couldn't use the other two in a comparable scenario, so I'm not gonna compare them uh, in this specific aspect. The new 56 is the overall champion, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, using it in the field. Uh, it is optically better. It has an acceptable size and weight. Again, you see here, it is big, but it's not too big. Um, and it's got better autofocus, although it doesn't have the linear motor. This, again, it's a bummer. They should have put those, although the size could have been uh, bigger if they did. And... More, more than anything else, the difference that I um, that I notice between the three of them is that the confidence that you have with the new 56 while shooting, making sure that the shots in focus, that the quality is there, that you don't overshoot just because you don't know if the lens can keep up with what you're doing, um, is way better with the 56 than uh, with the other two. As I said, I didn't shoot all of them at the same time and I, I, I shot them in couples. And what happened every time, I would start with, say, the old 56 or the 50 because I know them a little bit less. And I would keep shooting and shooting and shooting. But when it came to crunch time, when it came to those shots that I needed to make sure that I wouldn't miss, I would swap for the new 56, because I knew I was going to get, at the end, I was going to get better results with more confidence. Now, uh, that tells you that it's not only a matter of preference, like the look and all of that, but when you're using something like this as a professional tool, and for the cost they have, they are professional tools, uh, the confidence that they inspire in you can make a whole lot of a difference uh, when you're shooting a real scenario. The 50 comes right behind the 56 new and the old 56 lags a little bit beyond, which was to be expected. It was already, uh, it was, it's the oldest design, it's the oldest lens, and uh, it was to be expected that the new lens outperformed it. Does this mean that if you have one of the uh, older lenses, you have to immediately sell them and upgrade uh, to the new 56? Uh, do you have to throw those lenses away just because they're not good? No, no. The, the, we're, we're, not, we're not there. They are all great lenses and they can all perform great uh, with, the, 
with with the with the right camera. So, what I would say is, if you buy new, go for the new 56. It's a little bit cheaper than the 50, and it outperforms it. And not only that, it's smaller, lighter, and autofocus is better. So, to me, buying new is a no-brainer with between the two more expensive lenses because the 56 is 1,300 euros it's a thousand dollars while the 56 cost a little uh, while the 50 cost a little bit more and it's way bigger and autofocus is uh, worse and optical performance is below the new 56 if you're looking for the 50 because you want the f1 you want that specific look that you've seen you wanna oh you want to try it i would only buy it used so that you can shave some of the price uh, uh, of the new lens. And at that point, it comes in cheaper probably than the 56 new. So it kind of makes some sense. <clears throat> if you're on a budget, go for the old 56 because it's not bad at all. You can get bargain price right now. You're basically paying between a third and a half of the price of the new 56 when you're buying the uh, old 56 and it can perform can still perform great especially if you're not sh uh, pushing the new 40 megapixel sensors if you plan on shooting like your style is shooting with the x-pro and you don't mind upgrading for the new x-pro whenever it's going to be because you don't mind the 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 you don't care about the 40 megapixel you are in love with your x-pro 1 x-pro 2 x-pro 3 xe whatever then the 56 is still a great choice. Where you can start to see uh, more differences is when you're pushing the 40 megapixel sensor. At that point, I would uh, narrow down the choice between the, the new 56 and the 50. And again, and I would go for the new 56 without any, any doubt. If you own an old lens, one of the older lenses, if you're not striving for the best performance, if you're not striving for the highest resolution if you're not striving to get that perfect lens then get keep what you have you're gonna be fine you're not you're not going to uh, regret keeping what you have on the other hand if you're still on a budget and you cannot justify spending the amount of money that buying one of those three lenses mean and you don't want something as big as those don't forget you have this great option over here. If I can make it focus. Yeah. This is the 50 f.2. Now, this little lens can do almost, and I say almost, don't kill me in the comments. It can do almost everything that the other lenses do with a fraction of the price and a very small fraction of the weight in size it's almost a pocketable lens with a great quality and can perform really great now let me know in the comments below if you want me to test this lens on the new 40 megapixel camera because uh, i tested it very briefly not not a it wasn't a, a in-depth test uh, but it seemed to perform really really well but again let me know if there's any interest i will i will i will, I will do it bottom line you can't go wrong with any of the lenses that you've seen in this video, including the 50. What do you get? What are you gonna get? Whether you should upgrade or not, it's only up to you, up to what you think it's gonna fit best your needs. And the whole intent of this video was to tell you uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of each of, uh, of these lenses and let you decide uh, with an informed decision, with an informed. Uh, background information that then you can uh, go and take your decision without uh, the risk and then you're going to be saying oh I should have done that instead of that other you have now all information that you need to make your purchase or non-purchase decision uh, and, and, and feel great with the choice that you that you that you make that's it for today it was a long video I hope this helped you in your purchase or not purchasing decision uh, ciao, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.